So how do you upgrade your bid axe from this to this? Well, let's take a look at exactly how you can upgrade both the stock heatsink and fan here. Now, why would you want to do this here in the first place? Well, besides the fact that it's fun, there's two main reasons. Number one, if you want to get into overclocking, well, you're going to need to upgrade the cooling here. The stock fan and heatsink is okay for like stock settings and maybe some minor overclocking, but you're really going to want to uh, give it a more serious upgrade here uh, in order to boost the hash rate uh, of your bid axe. Second, I've noticed that as we're transitioning here from winter into summer and the ambient temperatures are going up, that's starting to cause my bid axis to overheat and I've started to have to back down the settings accordingly. And so for that reason, I've been needing to start to upgrade here uh, my different bid axis to improve the cooling. Now, different bid axis manufacturers have also been experimenting with different cooling solutions and I've been buying a variety of different options here. For example, we've got the 52 Pi ice cooler tower, which has not just one, but two fans here on the heatsink. This one's been okay, but honestly, actually not as great as I was hoping. I've actually had a lot better results here from the significantly larger Argon Thermal heatsink. Uh, and my original fan actually died and I've since upgraded it to a Noctua fan here as well. And before I started doing all these upgrades, this was actually my best performing bit axe for obvious reasons. Now I've been wanting to do more upgrades to my stock bit axis as well. And the question is like, well, what's the best, you know, heat sink and fan combination available? Well, I was planning on actually buying a bunch of different options and just doing some trial and error. However, fortunately, Andreas or Trendcraft on Twitter has actually spent a lot of time testing and documenting exactly that. And I would definitely recommend checking out his full article because honestly, it's gonna save us a ton of time and energy. And so I'm gonna link to his article for you down in the description below. And the best combination that he's found is actually the 52 Pi Low Profile Plus Cooler, which is originally designed for Raspberry Pis, as well as a Noctua fan. Now out of the box, this heatsink actually comes with a small stock fan, but we are going to want to upgrade it. And in order to put everything together, we're also going to need some custom adapters here. We're going to have one set of adapters here to connect the heatsink to the bit axe itself, and then a second to connect the Noctua fan to the heatsink. And these adapters were also created by Trendcraft, and he's made the 3D printing files available so that you can download them and print the adapters yourself. Or you can send them off to a shop who will print them for you like I did. Additionally, when it comes to the Noctua fan, there's many different versions here of these fans with different sizes, different thicknesses, different voltage levels, and even different connectors. And so down in the description, I'm gonna be linking you to all the different parts that you're gonna need here for this upgrade. It's also worth noting that this connector is not actually compatible with every version of the bit axe. There's many different people who manufacture these bit axes and they might actually use different components and connectors. And so for that reason, the fan connector for your bit axes may or may not work here with these Noctuas. Now you can stick with the factory fan here like this, but I find for obvious reasons, it doesn't work quite as well. Uh, and so in this video, I actually wanna show you exactly what to look for with your connectors to see if your bit axes are compatible or not. If so, awesome, it's gonna be pretty plug and play. If not, there's actually three different solutions that I wanna show you to uh, modify things here to ensure that this fan will work. Finally, if you wanna go ahead and purchase a bit axe and you want it to be compatible with these fans, well, I've been chatting with Matt from Solo Satoshi and he's mentioned that all of the bit axe gammas that he's making moving forward are gonna have the proper fan connector to be compatible here with this Noctua fan. And so if you wanna pick one up, uh, I'll put a link down to where you can order the Bidax Gamma from him specifically. And then of course, all the different parts that you're gonna need here for this upgrade. Next, let's take a look at the different parts and components that you're gonna need here to perform this upgrade. Now you can do it on a Bidax Supra or a Gamma. It'll work basically the same. Uh, we've got the heatsink here, the low profile plus cooler. Uh, however, we're also gonna wanna upgrade the fan to get a beefier Noctua fan. You can see that it is larger than the stock fan. And so to connect the two, we've got this 3D printed adapter here like this. It's gonna allow us to upsize the fan. We're also gonna have a second set of adapters here that allows us to connect the heatsink to the PCB itself. Now you can see the stock uh, heatsink in this case just has these little plastic push pins and we're gonna wanna upgrade those uh, to some improved screws. I found that uh, playing around with different sizes, uh, the metric size three millimeter wide by 12 millimeters long are the ones that are gonna work best. And then we're also gonna wanna go ahead and upgrade the thermal paste here that uh, connects the heat sink to the ASIC. And we're gonna be using the Thermo Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme thermal paste. And then to clean off the original thermal paste, I've also got some isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. Now to start things off, we'll begin here first by removing the factory heat sink and fan. With this one, it's got just these little push pins like that. So we're just gonna push it through and then squeeze the tips and let them slide out. There's one, 
there's two. And we can go ahead and pull off uh, the stock fan and heatsink. Next, we can go ahead and set aside the heatsink and we're gonna wanna clean off the ASIC here. Got a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and we'll go ahead and get that ASIC nice and clean. Uh, it's okay if there's a little bit just kind of around the edges. We just wanna make sure the ASIC itself is nice and ready. Next, let's go ahead and prepare the heatsink for install as well. And we'll go ahead and remove this and replace it with the upgraded fan. So it's gonna be a little bit more plug and play. And to remove the stock fan, uh, it actually comes with this little adapter, which I found is pretty useful for reaching in between the fins and just kind of uh, pulling those little clips out. Do the same on this side. And there we go. And then looking at a previous bit axe that I've done here, as far as orientation, I installed it here with these uh, heat pipes kind of up to the top. You don't need to do that, but I think it kind of looks pretty good that way. It doesn't get in the way of the fan connector like that or anything. Uh, and then I've also got the cable coming out of the corner here so it can wrap around like this down to the fan connector. And so that means we'll take our heat sink like this, and then we're just gonna put our fan on top like that. Now to connect the two though, this is where this uh, adapter is gonna come into play. It's gonna first kind of slide onto the heat sink here like this. Uh, should clip into place. If it doesn't work, you can try uh, turning it 90 degrees, but it looks like uh, it clips in well like that. Then we're gonna grab our fan and just kind of slide it into place here like this. Uh, and it should fit really nicely. Uh, then to connect it, instead of using the screws, we can actually just use those brackets or just little clips that we just popped off. We're just gonna slide them into place here like that, and then just clip them back in place uh, underneath the heatsink. We can then do the same thing here on the other side as well. And now we've got it uh, upgraded super easy here with the Noctua fan. And then flipping over the heatsink, you're gonna notice that on this side, we've got two screw threads, and that's gonna be where we're gonna be placing these adapters here like this to connect to the bit ax. Now, if you take a closer look at these adapters, you'll notice that on one side, there is a little bit of a raised lip, while on the other side, it's totally flush. This is the side that's gonna be connecting to the bit ax, and the idea is that once we've got the heatsink connected, we don't wanna actually crush the ASIC itself, and so uh, this little lip right there is gonna be pointing towards the bit axe to give us just a little bit of space here uh, and not actually damage the ASIC itself. Now to attach it to the heatsink, you can use the included screws that come uh, with the heatsink itself. So we'll pop one in here like this and start to screw it down. And then we'll do the same uh, on this side. And once it's done, it should look like this. Now, something that I was wondering and other people have been experimenting with is if you notice there's these four heat pipes like this that are designed to transfer the heat uh, from the ASIC to the main uh, cooler. Well, if you take a look at the single ASIC here on the bit ax, not all of these uh, heat pipes are actually gonna be able to make contact with the ASIC. And so for that reason, uh, some people have been experimenting with these little like copper pads that are designed with a little bit of thermal tape on the backside. You just stick them right there here like this, and that's gonna help to transfer the heat from the ASIC to all of the other heat pipes. That said, I found experimenting with it, it would overheat almost immediately. Turns out the uh, sticky tape here on this side doesn't actually do a good job of making contact there, and other people have found some issues as well. And for that reason, um, I've actually had better luck just attaching it directly here to the bit axe like that. And I know some other people on Twitter or X have also mentioned similar experiences as well, so uh, that's the route that I'm gonna go. Next, we're gonna get some more isopropyl alcohol and go ahead and clean off the contact area here uh, on the bottom of this heat sink. Next, we're gonna grab our thermal paste here like this, and we're gonna apply a little bit, maybe like the size of a grain of rice or something here, directly onto the uh, ASIC itself. Grab a little bit like that, and just put it right into place. Then we can grab ourselves four of these different nuts and screws uh, here out of the box. Then we're gonna start sliding these screws here in from the back of the bit ax. Next, we can start connecting things here, and I wanna let gravity actually be my friend so the screws don't fall out, and kind of install them here like this. Then we can take these little nuts here and start screwing them into place. And I just realized something that I forgot from before. I'm gonna have to back this up. I'm blocking access here to the fan connector. <laughs> so let's back this up a little bit. So because of the way everything attaches, we actually do need to plug uh, the fan connector in uh, to the bit axe here first. So we'll do that here. And if you're lucky, it's just gonna slide on here like this. However, that may not be the case depending uh, on the design of the fan connector here on the bit axe. Now, if you take a closer look here at this one, you can see there's this little plastic piece here on top of the fan, uh, and it's a little bit smaller, kind of only covering like the first maybe two or three uh, pins here on this side. 
Now on some other bit axes, that plastic piece might be a little bit wider and actually covering uh, most of the pins right there, kind of getting closer to this last pin here on that edge. And if that's the case, then well, you're not gonna be able to take the fan and actually slide it down into place here like this because of the fact that this little plastic piece right here on top of the connector is actually gonna be blocking access and this little connector is, well, not gonna let it actually slide on. Now, if this is the case, uh, there's three different solutions. Number one, if you've got a Dremel, you can just kind of like uh, cut that little piece off right there and then it'll be able to slide in place. Number two, you can always just cut off the factory connector here uh, on this one and then harvest the connector from the original uh, fan that we used before and just cut that off and then just kind of like splice the pieces together. And that's what I did here on this bit axe. You can see I've got the Noctua and it's got a white connector right there, not the factory black one, uh, because I just kind of cut off the connector here from one of these. And if you're comfortable with soldering, uh, you can do that and then just kind of cover everything back up with heat shrink. Then a third solution is to use the included USB adapter here like this. And so you're gonna be plugging this uh, in like that, and then you're gonna have an external USB port here uh, for the fan. I do think this solution is a little bit kludgy because then you're gonna have like, you know, uh, the power cable here for the bit ax and then a second one for the fan itself. I prefer having things a little bit more integrated, um, but this is definitely gonna be maybe the quickest and easiest solution as long as you're okay having a second cable. And then again, if you're gonna be buying a brand new bit ax, you can order one from Solo Satoshi to get one that has a uh, compatible fan connector that will work here with these Noctuas. Now, luckily in this case, this bit ax has the smaller connector like that. And so I can just kind of slide the Noctua fan right in place like this, uh, no problem. And actually, I guess I need to go ahead and clean off here uh, the thermal paste real quick so that I can reapply it. And now that everything's clean, we can just reapply our thermal paste here like this. Let's get our fan plugged in this time before we screw everything in place. We'll slide these screws back in. And now when we put the pieces together, uh, we are gonna be able to have that fan connected and plugged in. We'll go ahead and screw these nuts in place here. Here's two, three, and four. We'll make sure everything's nice and tight here. Let's clean things up here. And now we've got uh, our fan connected here on the bit ax. We can also kind of just uh, wrap the fan around here like this, just to make things a little bit cleaner as well aesthetically. Then we can go ahead and plug our bit ax back in uh, and make sure everything is working and up and running. And of course, ensure that it doesn't uh, immediately overheat or anything either. And as it's booting up, one thing that I love here about these Noctua fans is they're both really quiet and they are really effective uh, as well. And we can keep an eye on the temperatures and everything, but uh, now we're down, what, in the low 40s or so here uh, with our Overclock Supra, which is awesome. We're, of course, want to give it a little bit more time here just to ensure everything is good, uh, but so far, so good. We're not seeing, like, any immediate huge spikes uh, on the thermals here. And so now that we're up and running, the question is, well, how much better is this fan compared to stock? I did some testing kind of before and after uh, with some of my other bit axes, and I found that before, if it was running at 56 degrees Celsius, after the upgrade here, it actually dropped down to about 37 to 40 degrees Celsius, which is a significant upgrade at the exact same settings. And this is also over the course of the day as ambient temperatures are starting to go up as well. And so this has definitely been a big improvement. And then in terms of hash rate, it's now allowing me to push my Supras to over one terahash per second. And then my Gammas can now hash it closer to two terahash per second. And surprisingly, I've also found this to be more effective than the significantly larger uh, Argon Thermal heatsink. You would think that this one would actually work better, but surprisingly, I've actually had better results here with this Low Profile Plus, as others have found online as well. Additionally, with the fan, a couple other things to mention. Uh, with one of my bit axes, I actually tried leaving the stock fan in place because I didn't want to, like, re- uh, do the connectors and stuff. And I actually did find that this fan, the Noctua, does make a big difference. I'm not actually that happy here with the stock fan. And so I've actually cut off the connectors here for the stock fan and left them here so that I can later add uh, a Noctua and just kind of like solder them back in place. However, I do think that uh, using a Dremel is gonna be an easier solution here to trim that down. So I'm probably gonna go that route. Additionally, it's also worth noting that the direction of the fan can make a difference as well if you have it maybe pushing versus pulling or something, depending on the configuration. So it's definitely worth experimenting here to see kind of like what setup works best for you. And if you're experimenting with your bit axes, I would love to hear about your experiences as well, you know, good or bad. Like what have you found works best? 
Uh, I've been very happy here uh, with this Low Profile Plus and the Noctua, and so if you want to get something similar, again, I'll have a link down in the video description to all the different parts and components and the 3D printed adapters, uh, where you can order a bit -ax that's going to have the proper uh, connector here for the fan, etc. So all that is going to be down below. And so now that uh, I finally finished, you know, doing my last uh, bit axe here with this adapter, we have to go in and adjust the settings here because it's so much cooler. I've got more headroom now for overclocking. And so the next question is, well, how far can I overclock it before it starts to overheat? Now you can definitely go the manual route of like upping the frequency and the voltage and stuff, but there's also now some automated tools that through a little bit of trial and error, is gonna start to just kind of play with the different settings on your behalf, just let it run overnight or something and figure out the optimal settings for you. Now, I'm gonna be covering some of that kind of stuff, some of the open source software tools for the BitAx that people have been building. I'll cover those in some upcoming videos, so make sure you're subscribed if you'd like to see those videos, and if you'd just like to stay up to date as far as like, as we're experimenting and testing different BitAx stuff, if this is enjoyable and fun, definitely make sure you're subscribed for that as well. And so with that said, yeah, this has definitely been a fun project. I love having the extra headroom here for upgrading. A big thanks to Trendcraft uh, and all of you guys on Twitter as well for just kind of like bouncing ideas uh, back and forth and all the testing and development that's being done here. I actually really love the fact that like Bitcoin, which is this decentralized tool, uh, we have the same thing kind of going on here with mining and with open source development and different people playing with uh, different cooling options and overclocking and software tools, etc. It's definitely kind of a fun project here. Uh, to play with these bit axes. And so with that said, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Stay tuned for more videos. I hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you in the next one.